Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's take a closer look at those three experiments. Imagine doing experiments on another planet at a huge distance, millions of miles away, with a robotic craft that's sitting on the surface, and everything has to be done from there. All has to be preset, ready to go. So which of the three experiments showed some positive results? Well, two of them actually did. The first one was the paralytic release, and that one assumes that living organisms assimilate carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide. So how was that done? Well, they placed some soil in a chamber. They had 20 microliter of radioactive carbon dioxide because that's what they would be looking for. They add chemicals that contain carbon-14, and then later on, if they're assimilated, then they could be detected with a carbon-14 detector. They add krypton for pressure, because they want more pressure in the chamber, and they expose it to an arc light for 120 hours. They flushed out all the atmosphere because they want to get rid of anything that was not assimilated. Then they heated it to 635 degrees to paralyze inorganic material, essentially to destroy it and release any gases that could have contained the carbon-14 that was assimilated by the organic material and then they run the gases through a carbon-14 detector and it turned out that some fixation, meaning some absorption of carbon-14 was detected after all the atmosphere was flushed out and it was beyond what we would call experimental error. So there was some positive result even though it was small and so therefore there was some indication that life may be on the planet. However, Carbon, uh, carbon monoxide could also have been reduced by the peroxide on the surface of the uh, planet in the soil that would then be scooped up in that little chamber and therefore we know that there could be a positive, a false positive result because of this. Now of course they also wanted to make sure that they compared that to what the mass spectrometer would detect and if it didn't detect any organic material then of course any positive results here would be negated and of course you already know that the uh, no organic material was found using the test with the uh, mass spectrometer. The second test was the labeled release test which, which measures the growth and metabolism. So if there was any sort of life on the planet and things were introduced to get it to go again. For example, there could be dormant life, but it's just waiting for something to occur, some water to appear, some organic material, some food to appear for it to kind of spring back to life. We know that that exists on the earth. So they wanted to see what would happen. So again, they placed soil in a container. They dripped a combo of seven nutrients. And of course, these are the seven nutrients. Some of them are amino acids, things that life would want in order to have some sort of metabolism. Then they test for carbon dioxide generation. And it turns out that these experiments had been very carefully done on vast, a vast array of places on the earth in some very remote place like the Arctic and very dry deserts to try to simulate similar conditions that, that would exist on Mars. And then they compared the test results here and it went right in with the test results from the Earth. In other words, it really seemed like there was some metabolism taking place in the soil after the nutrients were added. Both Viking 1 and Viking 2 had positive test results even though they're 4,000 miles apart. So that looked extremely promising. But again, when they did the test with the mass spectrometer indicating there was no organic material in the soil, then they said there must be another reason, although they were not yet able to explain away the test results. And even today, there's still the scientists that say, well, that's a pretty strong indication of life on the planet. However, since the mass spectrometer didn't detect organic material, you really need to negate that test result. The third test was the gas exchange test, where they're looking for photosynthesis. Photosynthesis on the Earth means that plant life take carbon dioxide and convert it to oxygen. Could that be detected? So they added some soil to a chamber, they purged the atmosphere, they replaced the purged atmosphere with helium, which is a, a noble gas. They add liquid nutrients and then they added some additional water. There was both organic and inorganic nutrients that were added. The periodical, uh, periodical, is that the right word? Periodical? Yeah. 1L, right? Yeah, something was wrong here. Periodical measure of gas to look for oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, hydrogen, and methane. The results were that there were small changes detected 
in these gases, but overall the test was considered negative. So the changes were so minute that they did not feel that that was a positive enough of a result, so it was just simply called negative. And then we did some simulations on the Earth with similar tests, and we found that those small changes could be explained away by other chemical reactions that could be reasonably expected on the surface of Mars. So test three was a negative, test two was a very big positive, and test one was a very minor positive. So if this was the only, if these were the only three tests that were done, people would have concluded there are strong indications of life on the surface of Mars. But because no organic material could be found using the mass spectrometer, all positive results were therefore automatically negated. They knew that going into all this testing, and so therefore we need to simply accept the virtual fact that there's no life found on the surface of Mars.